It's that time of year when ranchers and homeowners are plagued by the fall armyworm. The fall armyworm is a common pest of Bermuda grass, sorghum, corn, wheat and rye grass, and many other crops in East Central Texas. In order to know how to best control the fall armyworm, we must first know a little bit about the life cycle of the fall armyworm. Hello. I'm Richard Parrish, the County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service in Leon County. Let's talk about the fall armyworm. It is difficult to predict when fall armyworms will infest our pastures and yards. Fall armyworm outbreaks in pastures and hayfields often occur following a rain, which apparently creates a favorable condition for eggs and small larvae to survive in large numbers. Hayfields with a dense canopy and vigorous plant growth are often more susceptible to armyworm infestations than less intensely fertilized and managed fields. Irrigated fields are also susceptible to fall armyworm infestations, especially during drought conditions. Typically, the fall armyworm overwinters in South Texas. Populations increase in South Texas in early spring, and successive generations move northward as the season progresses. There are four life stages in the life of the fall armyworm the egg, larvae, pupa, and adult. The eggs for fall armyworms are very small. They are typically laid in clusters of about 50 or more. The egg clusters are covered with grayish fuzzy scales for protection. Eggs are seldom seen in grasses. They are usually laid at the base of host plants. Once the eggs hatch, very small caterpillars emerge. Armyworms are very small, usually less than an eighth of an inch at first. They cause little plant damage, and as a result, they often go unnoticed. The larvae feed for two to three weeks and grow as they feed, and a full-grown larvae grows to about an inch to an inch and a half long. Given their immense appetite, great numbers and marching ability, fall armyworms can damage entire fields or pastures in a few days. It is when the larvae are full grown that the most damage to vegetation occurs. Once the armyworm larvae completes its feeding, it tunnels into the soil to a depth of about an inch and enters the pupal stage. The armyworm moth emerges from the pupa in about 10 days and repeats the life cycle. The fall armyworm moth has a wingspan of about an inch and a half. The front pair of wings is dark gray with an irregular pattern of light and dark areas. Moths are most active at night when they feed on nectar and deposit egg masses. A single female can deposit up to well over 1,000 eggs, and there are four to five generations per year. The larvae of the fall armyworms are generally green, brown, or black, with white to yellowish lines running from head to tail. A distinct white line between the eyes form an inverted Y pattern on the face. Four black spots aligned in a square on the top of the segment near the back end of the caterpillar is also characteristic. The larvae of the fall armyworm do their damage by stripping the foliage. Once the foliage on one plant has been stripped, they will then move to the next available plant. Given their immense appetite, great numbers, and marching ability, Fall armyworms can damage entire fields or pastures in a few days. Their marching through a pasture is what gave them the name armyworm. Look for fall armyworm larvae feeding in the crop canopy during the late evening and early mornings and during cool, cloudy weather. 
During hot days, look for armyworms low in the canopy and on the soil surface where they hide under loose soil and fallen leaves. Kneeling on the ground and parting the grass can reveal armyworms. A sweep net is very effective for sampling hay fields for fall armyworms. When fields are wet with dew or rain, armyworms can be detected by walking through the field with rubber boots as the worms will stick to the boots. Small larvae chew the green layer from the leaves, creating a window pane effect and later notch the edges of leaves. Look for this feeding damage, and if it's detected, look more closely to assess the infestation. The key to managing fall armyworms is frequent inspection of fields to detect infestations before they have caused economic damage. Once larvae are more than three quarters of an inch long, the quantity of foliage they eat increases dramatically. During their final two to three days of feeding as a larvae, armyworms eat 80% of the total foliage consumed during their entire development. Parasitic wasps and flies and insect viruses help to suppress armyworm numbers. However, these natural enemies can be overwhelmed when large numbers of migrating moths move into an area and the weather conditions favor high survival of eggs and larvae. Other natural enemies include ground beetles, birds, skunks, and other rodents. A pretty good indication that you might have an armyworm problem is a gathering of birds in a pasture where birds usually do not gather in large numbers. The density of armyworms sufficient to justify insecticide treatment depends on the stage of crop growth and the value of the crop. Seedling plants can tolerate fewer armyworms than established plants. Infestations of more than two to three armyworms, well, about a half inch or longer, per square foot may justify an insecticide application. If practical, apply insecticides early in the morning or late in the evening when armyworm larvae are most active and therefore most likely to come in contact with the insecticide spray. If the field is near harvest, an early harvest rather than insecticide treatment is an option. Once the field is cut, most of the armyworms will die due to lack of food and exposure to high temperatures. In some cases, armyworms can move into an adjacent field and continue to feed. There is no preventative treatments for fall armyworms. That is why inspection of the pasture is crucial. Early detection of fall armyworms is the best management tool. There are several chemical options for control of fall armyworms. Anytime you use a chemical option for control of fall armyworms or any other pest problem, it is important to always read and follow the label instructions on pesticide use and restrictions. This also includes when and how to apply the pesticide as well as using any appropriate personal protective equipment. Make sure that you understand and abide by any grazing or harvesting restrictions listed on the chemical label. There are some chemical options included in this presentation for the control of fall armyworms. This information is provided for educational use only and is not intended as a promotion or endorsement for the individual products. The active ingredients beta cyfluthrin, cyfluthrin, gamma cyhalothrin, lambda cyhalothrin, and zeta cypermethrin are all classified as pyrethroid insecticides and therefore have similar characteristics. Pyrethroids are nerve toxins. Due to their effectiveness and relatively low cost, they are widely used to control fall armyworms in pastures and hay. In many situations, a single treatment is sufficient to control an infestation. However, when fall armyworm populations are high, frequent retreatment with pyrethroids may be necessary due to their short residual control, usually two to three days, 
and reinfestation of the fields. Pyrethroid insecticides are effective against grasshoppers and suppress Bermuda grass stem maggot. Demolin and Intrepid are insect growth regulators and kill by disrupting the normal development of immature insects. To be effective, they must be applied when the armyworms are less than a half inch long. This can be a limitation since infestations may not be found before larvae are larger. However, both products can continue to kill small caterpillars for one to three weeks. Thus, the addition of demolin or intrepid to a pyrethroid insecticide application can extend the control period for fall armyworms. This combination can be especially useful when fall armyworm populations are high and fields are frequently reinfested. Demolin and intrepid can be used alone if applied as a preventative application and when caterpillars are less than a half inch in size. Dimlin is also effective against small grasshoppers, while Intrepid is active only against armyworms and other caterpillars. The active ingredient in Prevathon is effective against all sizes of fall armyworms and grasshoppers. It provides several weeks of residual control depending upon the rate applied and is a general use pesticide. Besiege is a combination of the active ingredient in Prevathon and a pyrethroid insecticide. Malathion and Carboril have a long history of use for armyworm and grasshopper control and are general use insecticides. Carboril has a two week waiting period after application before the crop can be grazed or harvested. Spinosad is most effective on small larvae. One formulation of Spinosad, in trust, is approved for organic production by the Organic Materials Review Institute. If you would like more information on control of fall armyworms, contact your local county extension office.